The president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, has announced that he will run for a fourth term in office in 2024. Now, this comes after a 2015 referendum abolished term limits, allowing Kagame to remain in power until 2034 if he wins the next two elections. Kagame has been president of Rwanda since 2000, and he's credited with leading the country's economic and social transformation. Kagame's decision to run for a fourth term has been met with mixed reactions. Some Rwandans who support him say that he's the best person to lead the country, while others are concerned about his continued rule and the lack of political space in Rwanda. Let's now bring in economic and governance analyst Alexis Unkuruziza. He joins us from Kigali. Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. All right. Well, you know, there have been several reactions to the announcement of a fourth term by the president of Rwanda, Rwanda Paul Kagame. I'd like to find out what your thoughts are. Um, exactly what does this mean, not just for Rwanda, but for the African continent? Okay, thank you very much for your invitation on this breakfast uh, uh, framework. Um, of course, as you're saying, uh, President Kagame said that he will go for another term. I mean, uh, uh, to run as one of the candidates to the presidential election that is supposed to take place uh, uh, next year, 2024. And um, by law, uh, President Kagame is allowed because... Uh, the current Rwanda constitution uh, that was amended in 2015 allows him to run for another term till 2032. And um, not beyond that also, um, as you said, there are various uh, views or opinion in terms of uh, seeing Kagame again uh, running for another term. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, there are various views and opinion but if you look at me um, in Kigali currently if you see the the sentiment uh, of the people in Rwanda they would even wish to give him more time because uh, Kagame did a lot to transform this country because uh, if you remember he's the one that stopped genocide in Kigali in Rwanda and there's almost 26 years of his leadership he has managed to transform this country and made this country one of the fast growing economy on the African continent. Kagame is also exporting peace uh, uh, yeah. across I mean, the but, African but, countries. But, Mr. Nkuruzi, the, the, the idea that you know, he is the best person, I'm sure there's a lot of people who you know, don't mind him staying there, but at the same time, if we're talking about the mm -hmm. democratic system of government you know, in, across Africa and, you know, and, and the world, does it mean that there's yes. no other person who has fresh ideas, who has new ideas on how to move Rwanda forward? And it has to be him. And after 2024, 2034, you know, he might once again seek re-election again for another 10 years. Is, is that, you know, is that something that Rwandans should be fine with? Seems or, you know, just because, you know, he's been a, you know, seemingly decent president. Actually, um, there are not so many Rwandans which are concerned to have... Kagame running for another elections. If you get closer to them, uh, the sentiment you hear from the majority of people is that this man has tried actually to rebuild our our nation that was actually almost dead in 1994. Uh, second thing they say, of course, he has kept the unity of Rwandans. Uh, we no longer travel with the uh, IT card that uh, mention our ethnicity groups. We are all Rwandans and we have equal access to countries' opportunities. So majority of them, they don't even care uh, to have him continue even beyond that. Uh, the thing is, uh, also, uh, if you look at the Kagame uh, leadership style, and he always said it, that his leadership consists on uniting Rwandans to, uh, to make Rwanda an accountable state and also thinking big. Those are the three pillars of his leadership. And so many Rwandans are very conversant with the three pillars. Uh, basing that, uh, I mean, Kagame made this country uh, one of the pride of African country today. 
So majority of them don't see actually uh, the problem to have him or uh, continue the leadership of Rwanda. What they need, they need more of the action that this man is bringing to Rwandans. All right, and uh, we can't deny the improvements we've seen in Rwanda, the quality of life for Rwandans, um, how clean the country is, how very well rooted in their culture the country is, and like you mentioned, the unity the people of Rwanda have experienced. Are there maybe concerns that other African leaders who maybe not, may not have done as much for their countries as Paul Kagame has done for Rwanda, their concerns that they might also see this as a form of um, a reference point for them to continue staying in power longer than they should, even though they haven't done half as much as he's done and the country is demanding for fresh leaders? I don't think, uh, I mean, my, I don't think uh, who's, uh, the, 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 the coups that we are seeing around uh, African countries, especially in the West part of Africa, uh, citizens are saying no to the types of the leadership, the leadership that doesn't uh, advance their lives, the leadership that doesn't change or transform their countries. So uh, when African uh, leaders are not delivering, uh, you've seen it, uh, citizens are the first to go and demonstrate and, 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 and make them go. Because uh, I think uh, the current generation of African people, they need to see deliverables more than uh, having uh, leaders who are there for eternity without delivering. So I don't think it's the same thing. And um, uh, assume we are in a company when actually uh, the leadership is delivering and uh, is making a lot of incomes, there is no need even to change that leadership. Uh, uh, the, the other hand would, would, would be to, to see how actually to maintain that style of leadership and create more revenues and income. So I think right. it's the same for Rwanda. I don't compare the country to a, a private company, but uh, when there is a profitability, you need to maintain that style that generates a lot of, a lot of uh, profitability. Yeah, yeah, I, totally I think understand this is the that. sentiment for Rwandans. Yeah, yeah you know, I, and I understand that. You know, they, they, of course, finally found something good. They don't want to let it go. But at the same time, yeah. you know, there's a lot of ways that you could also criticize him. He's also not, be, not been very fair to the opposition in Rwanda. He does all of those accusations. And of course, you cannot be the only person with ideas on how to move the country but forward. Then but then another angle would be that when it comes to democracy, the voice of the people is the voice of God. And if True. the people are leaning towards Paul Kagame, then so be it. Thank you so much, Mr. Ankur Rosiza, <sighs> for joining us this morning. Well, Thank right. you very much for hosting me. All right. Have a wonderful day.